Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn very quickly how to create your very first custom method uh, using Kit. In order to do that, um, I have created a, a project called Real Life Automation Problems because in this series we would focus on whatever test automation problems that we generally face uh, in our day-to-day -day activities and how to fix them or solve them with kits. So I'm going to create a scenario very quickly. Uh, and I'm going to say custom method. And then I'm going to create a test case underneath. Uh, let's call it test case one. Okay. Now to create your custom method, um, we can uh, open up Eclipse um, and we go to file and then we click on import and under general we click on existing projects into work workspace next and then we browse and we browse and then we go to the root location uh, of the tool wherever your kits is installed you would have a folder called engine just simply select that select folder and your project would start showing up in the project section. Click on finish. So what you have done is you have imported the heart uh, of the tool. Basically all the actions that the tool performs is uh, stored in this engine and you have basically imported it. Uh, when, you when you first import it, it comes with some errors. Okay, so if I go to uh, markers it shows me that there are some build path problems um, the way to fix this is very simple <clears throat> uh, right click on uh, the the project and go to build path and say configure build path and now go to libraries so in the libraries under class path, all the libraries are mentioned and some of these libraries are essentially missing. Uh, so what we do is we will select all the libraries that is that are there under class path. We're going to select all of them and then we are going to simply click on remove. Okay, now we have removed all the libraries which are part of class path, but we would re-add them. So click on class path click on add external jars and go to the lib folder click on the lib folder and here you have all the jar files that need to be added so select all the jar files by control a you do not need to select the drivers folder commands folder or the c lib and just click on open so this will add all the jars back uh, to the class path. Apply and close, and the project starts building, shows us some warnings, but that's okay. So now our project is fully ready uh, to be used, to be customized. Now, if I open up uh, the, the Java folder, we have many packages. I've briefly explained these packages in one of my previous videos. I'll provide the link of that video in the description section. Um, so we have um, a commands package. So uh, it follows a reverse domain name uh, naming convention. So com.cognizant.cognizantits engine and then commands. If we open this up, we have all the different kinds of uh, methods that are built into the tool in these different Java files. So, for example, the basic uh, Java file contains methods like click, click if exists, uh, click if visible, so on and so forth. Yeah. For checkboxes, we have check, we have uh, uncheck, and methods like this, so on and so forth. Now, there is a Java file which is going to be very useful for us called samplescript.java. So if we click on this one, here we have a default uh, explanation of how to write a custom code uh, in kits, right? So in the engine, how to write a custom code. OK, 
okay so there are quite a lot of examples that we can use so we will keep coming back to this sample script from time to time to understand what we need to do now as of now if if we have to create our very first custom code um, the convention that i would like to follow is always create your own customized method your own custom method in a separate uh, package so create a package okay let me just copy this name because the reverse domain name is the convention that we are going to follow right click new package give it a proper name um, custom dot methods oh, you may not give a dot here so custom methods and finish so the new package is created it's always better to do it in a separate package because then you know that okay if i only look into this custom package i i will get all the customizations that i have injected into the tool so always good to segregate it that way and then right click new and then create a class I would call this um, custom finish. So now we have a custom dot Java uh, under this package. Now the first thing that I would do is I would uh, go to basic and try to copy uh, one of the inbuilt methods and uh, see what what we get. So copy and bring it to your custom method it automatically uh, pulls in the imports that are required for us right so we do not have to explicitly import all these packages all these classes separately there are some errors which we want to eliminate uh, but first uh, we have to see that once a class is being defined, we also have to define a constructor. Uh, how is the constructor defined? So the class extends the general class and it has a constructor that we have, uh, we have to create. So I'll just copy this one, you know, copy and go back to the custom method and I'll paste it. So now our custom class also extends the general method, but the constructor should also be with the same name. And that's it. And now we have to close the class. So we do not have any more error in our, in our freshly created class, which is very good. So we have a, we have a default method called click which is also present in the basic we just have copied it but we will alter it we are going to create our own custom method right so before we do that let me explain what should be the components of the custom method so there is an action annotation this will this action annotation will define whether in the tool you will be able to see your created actions in this drop down list or not okay so if you do not put the action annotation, it will not appear in this dropdown. Okay, that's one. Now the object type uh, could be Selenium or could be browser as well. Uh, we are going to focus only on uh, uh, browser and web automation for now. So we are not going to look at the web services or web or uh, you know protractor mobile automation uh, for now. So either it can be Selenium or it should be browser. So if you choose the browser method, it is not restricted to an object. You can run your custom method uh, by using the object name as browser. We will see an example of this. But if we choose um, the um, object type as Selenium, we would always have to use a selenium object as an object type so in this custom method we are going to print uh, certain uh, information that we can get from the tool 
uh, say for example I want to print the input I want to print the condition I would then replace the description as print input and condition now this custom method will require an input and a condition right so we have to uh, tell this method to always accept an input and a condition mandatorily so type input equals input type dot yes so that makes the input mandatory if I had put no that would be the input is not required optional is you may or may not enter it right so here I'm going to say yes and we also need the condition so I'm going to say condition equal to same thing input type dot yes so now I have taken the input I have taken the condition from the UI of of the tool so the input and the condition will be fed into this action okay now we'll set a method name print input and condition and we don't need these actions I'm going to remove them and we are going to simply say input is now kits offers the input the condition the element the drivers all of these as predefined variables global variables which you can just simply access by calling the variable name and for input the variable name is simply input okay I would also print the condition the same concept uh, condition is just by calling the global variable you can print the condition so you can also uh, get hold of the data that gets fed into any custom method and that is also accessible using the data global variable so I would say data is and then data right so just like for input we have an input global variable condition global variable for condition uh, similarly for um, for data we have a data global variable okay now what is the difference between an input and a data the input is essentially whatever is there in this cell okay so the input can be the name of the variable the input can be uh, the name of the data sheet colon column name we are going to see that shortly but the data is the actual data that is being fed into the method by resolving the input we will see this very shortly now so before before we close this we're going to quickly create a reporting for this to report uh, to create a report logging for a method uh, all you need to do is enter this command report dot and then it says update test log and then under update test log you have um, the action so this is the action so this will be uh, reflected in the report um, and in the description you can enter the values that you're going to print right so you can say um, input um, and similarly you can start to print uh, the condition and the data so
this would be the data and this would be the condition so you need to pass the status as well so the status could be either you want to fail this or you want to uh, use fail with no screenshot or you can pass it and pass ns meaning pass with no screenshot or you want to use done um, or you want to use debug for example now uh, debug is usually used in the catch block so in the try catch block whenever the, uh, your code enters into a catch block and you and you're unsure what is the cause of the error then you enter the status as debug. I have not used a try catch block, but I genuinely rec recommend that whenever you create a method, always use a try catch block. And then uh, um, in this case, I'm going to use a done. And then that's it. So now our code is properly ready uh, to be deployed. As in now we can build a jar out of this uh, so that it starts appearing here. So let's see how to do that. Um, we are going to collapse the main Java, select source main Java and source main resources, only these two, do a right click, export, go to Java and then select jar file. Then click on next, expand this, make sure the source main java and source main resources are selected only these two are selected then you browse to the location where your tool is installed okay so this is the location where your tool is installed go to the lib folder now in the lib folder we are not going to uh, do anything with all the jars that are present we are only interested in the engine and we are only going to update this engine 2.0 jar file because this is the jar file which we are enhancing we are enhancing with our freshly created method so select this jar file and click on save yes and then click on finish yeah so now we have been able to export this freshly created method onto the jar file uh, we go to the tool and we have to restart the tool. So restarting of the tool means the tool will start up with its uh, freshly created jar file. And now in the action column, we should be able to see our method. So if I type print input condition, see, this is the method that we just created. Fairly simple. Now, uh, if we save this, it immediately throws the input and condition in red. That means it is telling us, hey, the input is uh, mandatory, the condition is mandatory. Okay, now, if we had set the input as no and the condition as no, um, these wouldn't have thrown us errors. All right. Now, uh, what I want to do is create a data sheet. I would say data sheet one, and the data would be name and my name, Sheesh. I don't need data two. So I'm going to feed this by dragging and dropping uh, this cell onto the input. So now I have filled up input and in condition, I'm just going to simply pass a string. I have already explained the need or necessity of a condition uh, in, uh, in some of my previous videos where I have dealt with loopings and iterations and sub iterations. Uh, you can use the condition column to, to take in data uh, or any kind of an information that you would want to feed into your custom method. So I'm also going to simply pass in the condition column my surname. That's about it. 
um, and now I am in a position to run this test case, right? So I'm going to select no browser because it does not require any browser to be opened. Um, and if I just click on run, the test case got executed, okay? If I expand the test case, let's also look at the reporting that we had injected. So going to the tool, Right, so, right, so um, in the report, we see the first thing that will be printed is the action. So the action is nothing but the name of the method. So it prints that um, in the step name column. Then in the uh, description column, it prints the input. Now the input is data sheet one colon name so if you look at the input column it is data sheet one colon name um, then i need the data now even though this is the reference of the data the actual data is ashish so the tool has resolved the input to create this data and it has used uh, the data that is there in the condition column uh, goes to print it now imagine if you have access to an input of your choice, a data of your choice, and a condition that is required for your project, you can create all kinds of if-else conditions, all kinds of uh, looping conditions, all kinds of complex logic that, that you require uh, for your project. So this is how we create a custom method. I hope you find this video informative. See you in the next video.